primarily the backside glute maximus, the big bum muscle, biggest muscle in your body, and your glute medius, which is on the outside. But we're also gonna get the inside of the groin. The way we do this is using a, a piece of tubing. And the simplest thing to do is tie a knot in the tube, wrap it around something that's immovable in your house. If you have nothing that it works very well with, you can stick this knot in the door and just close the door. So the knot is behind the door, the knot's not gonna move away. We then stand on something, stick our foot into that tube, and you want to sort of stand on a phone book, something that's not, that gives you a little bit of height so I can come up and this foot doesn't touch the ground. You can use a, a broomstick or something to give you a little bit of balance to start. And there's three movements here. I'm gonna keep my hips level. I'm gonna keep my foot pointed forward, my trunk very, very still, and I'm gonna pull that foot very gently to touch the opposite leg. And then back out, and in again. If it's too easy, you come a little further away. And pulling in. And back. Nice and slow both ways, so you're not just letting the tube snap you back. There's a big component of the strength that occurs by that nice, gentle, repeating resistance. With all of these exercises, we're actively working the inside of the groin here, the adductors, but we're also working the core because I'm having to stabilize myself. I'm also working all the muscles around this hip are contracting isometrically to hold myself stable. I'm thinking of keeping my feet nice and supported on the ground, good contact. If you have very, very flat feet, it's better to do this with your orthotics on or your shoes initially, but gradually as you train your intrinsic muscles of your foot, which we'll talk about in a little while, you want to sort of maintain that nice contact with the big toe, the baby toe, and the backside of the heel, those three points on your foot. So that's the first thing we think about. We put our foot in the tubing, we pull in. I'll get people to do that sort of five times. And then you turn, face the tubing, and just literally come straight back. Starting with a little resistance on the tube about 20 degrees forward, coming back about 20 degrees. And again, my trunk stays still. A lot of people will cheat by letting themselves move and use momentum. You stay very, very still. And then you turn again and do the exact opposite, just going straight out sideways. And this is the one that you're going to feel the greatest on the outside of the glute that you're standing on, on the outside of the hip that you're standing on. And again, I don't deviate my trunk, I stay very still and my toes stay pointed forwards. I don't let my hip open up like so. And I don't use momentum to just bang off the required numbers of repetitions. And I'll usually find between five and eight repetitions of those three are sufficient enough to get a little bit of strength into those hips and then I just switch legs.